Welcome, everybody. It's another edition of the Journal of Lifestyle Medicine podcast. I'm Sven Hosford here in uh, the Sorgatron Towers studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Today is September 30th. Uh, we've got a new a print issue out on the street. It's been out for about a month. Uh, it's got a great cover story you all should be reading from Dan Wagner. You can find copies at your local waiting rooms, yoga studios, and health food stores. Contact me if you need some copies at your store or location. Uh, you can email me at svenhosford at gmail.com. Coming up in this podcast, this is going to be a great one. Um, we're going to check in with uh, Trent Nazipuck. He's going to tell us a little bit about Juice uh, Juice Fest coming up. And then we'll be spending a few minutes with Jim Donovan, uh, one of my favorite drummers. And uh, he's going to be talking about some lessons learned from his summer camp, which he called uh, Summer Camp with Carlos. Uh, and how he turned them into a sound empowerment workshop. That's going to be a lot of fun. Our headliner uh, for this podcast is Ralph Stevens. He is a 2008 inductee into the Massage Therapy Hall of Fame. He comes to Pittsburgh regularly to teach with the Pittsburgh School of Massage. Uh, he's been practicing massage for 27 years, and uh, he combines sports massage techniques, neuromuscular therapy, Medical Massage and Neural Reset Therapy, NRT. We're going to find out all about that. Coming up in future podcasts, uh, what a great lineup we've got for the next couple of weeks. Uh, next week, Dr. Michael Greger is going to be here from nutritionfacts.org. One of my favorite nutrition fact checkers. I puts out a new DVD every year on um, uh, what's going on in the nutrition for the past year. He's got weekly videos that you all should be subscribing to. Can't wait to talk to him. He's also one of the funniest guys around. In two weeks, we're going to do uh, an extended interview with Jim Donovan. Uh, he is going to tell the best rock and roll story you've ever heard. That's coming up in two weeks. Uh, this is the lesson taught to him by Carlos Santana. And uh, he'll have a lot more details about sound and rhythm and how to use them as tools of empowerment. But until then, it's just a little preview before we get to that, uh, before we get to the full calendar. Let's take a few minutes and listen to Jim. I had a little conversation with him today, and he's going to tell you about a really important uh, workshop coming up. Uh, wellness professionals should really take uh, take a, uh, care and pay attention to this. It's coming up October 10th and 12th. Let's talk to Jim. So we're talking today with Jim Donovan. He is the former drummer from the multi-platinum award-winning group Rusted Root. He's also now... A semi-retired, I guess, from the rock and roll world. He's going to tell us about a real fun event that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Welcome, Jim Donovan. Hello. Nice to be here. So did I get uh, did I get the intro right? You're a multi-platinum. They call that award-winning, or how do they what do they say about that? You know, uh, I need to figure out who they are, first of all, and then, <laughs> and then go to them, and we'll try to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, I've uh, had, had a lot of, lot of good fortune throughout the career with uh, with recording and with performing, uh, the band I played with, we sold three million records and toured with a, a lot of uh, a lot of my heroes. Yeah, yeah. I I have to tell you, I was watching um, the original uh, Ecstasy video mm -hmm. oh, uh, on YouTube, <laughs> and uh, there's a, a very uh, I'm sure you now maybe regret it, but there's a great scene with you uh, with a rose in your mouth. Yes, yeah. That's that's very definitely uh, on the regret list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, if if you watch it, that whole video might be on your regret list. I I, I, I tell you what, it it, it definitely uh, it's definitely it's not on my regret list because it was so bizarre and fun and weird. Uh, so, someday I can tell you the whole story of that one. It's it's a pretty funny story. Well, that's, I'm sure that's a story you might not want to tell your daughters right away too. So. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, we, uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I think should be said that you and I have uh, some history in drumming together. Uh, we, I think I got to know you best first about, about 15, 20 years ago when we were doing that uh, men's drumming group over at the Newman Center. Yep, I remember that. Our boss was doing all that, uh, uh, what did he call that? The, um, all that, the hero's journey work. Hero's journey, right. Yeah, right. He's, he still does that. It's, uh, it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, and and uh, you know I think that's where I first really got an appreciation of uh, the transformational work of of drumming and just how deeply that can uh, bond a group of people, uh, totally non-verbally. You know? Yes. And it 
one of the most fun things we did together was those drum cruises in about 10 years ago. You know, we oh, did four yes. five of those. Tell us your experiences about that and, and what kind of uh, ecstasy you derive from those events. We, uh, yeah, several years ago, we did these, these uh, cruises on the rivers of Pittsburgh. Uh, I try to remember what, what exactly we called them. Uh, River we, we would sail, yeah, we would sail for three hours on the rivers and uh, there'd be 300 of us, of us just drumming and dancing and laughing and uh, really feeling that just the, the connection of, of the people. We had little kids and senior citizens and everybody in between, and we all made something together. That's, I think, what I like the best. Yeah, those were so much fun, I yeah. can tell you. And I know that's your career now, basically. You, you were a, uh, tell us about your current position uh, at St. Francis and then some of the gigs that you're doing. Sure. It is, uh, it's, and, and this is by design, it's, it's, a, it's a really wide uh amount of things that, that I that I have my hands in. I, I teach full-time at St. Francis University. Uh, I just took over as chairman of the fine arts department here. Um, got my master's degree a, a few years ago and um, you know, really enjoying having uh, the influx of new students every year. It's, it's always, uh, they keep me on my edge. They're very bright, very sharp. Uh, up here I do classes that relate to music and wellness. Uh, we do some, some team and leadership development. I teach some traditional West African drumming classes, as well as uh, I direct something called the World Drumming Ensemble up here. Mm. Uh, beyond that, I also uh, train and, and teach outside of the university, so I do lots of corporate events, again, team building and wellness in particular. Um, and the trainings I do, you know, a after having taught for over the last 15 years, I decided that before I leave the planet, uh, I want to make sure that I share all the things that I've learned uh, to as many people who are as are willing to, to learn it. So I have a, a couple of different trainings I do. One is called Drum Circle Leadership, and the other is uh, an event that's coming up in Pittsburgh soon called Sound Empowerment Training. Sound Empowerment Training. So tell us about that. What you're doing more than just drumming? Then you're doing all different kinds of sounds. That's right. the The premise of of any of the teaching and any of the trainings that I do is that I make it. Uh, a mandate to myself that I figure out a way to reach anybody who is willing, even if they aren't trained musicians. Uh, what I've learned about sound and music is that um, having come from a classically trained background and having gone through that system, I recognize that even though the system is good, one thing it does is um, kind of um, not intentionally is it leaves out a lot of people, uh, particularly the people who might not be good at reading music or regurgitating something uh, on a page. Whoa, my microphone just fell. <laughs> and so you know, one, thing I, I've done to, I'm sorry. The one thing I've done to, to, to counter that is to create systems, trainings, workshops that invite everybody, uh, even if they don't believe they're good at it. So sound empowerment is all about using the tools of rhythm, rhythm uh, and the voice to help people shift energy. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I talk about energy, I talk about it in terms of heavy and light. And what heavy energy means to me is the energy of anxiety, the energy of you know, constriction, of fear, of worry. And we use sound, you know, rhythm, voice, drumming, toning, chanting, as a tool to shift that heaviness into lighter energy so energy that is um similar to being feeling just feeling content feeling open feeling relaxed um, and when we when we do that with people something else happens and that is that we become more available uh, more willing to connect with each other in an authentic way so it has has a couple of, of uses and you know the more we do it the, the deeper the effect of it becomes so you know we first relax we first open and then we connect with the people that we're with and it's uh it's, it's a very satisfying uh, satisfying training for me to do and 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 as i witness for people to take so in your training coming up are you is it geared then mostly for people who uh, m maybe have no experience with music whatsoever or is it for people who have had a little bit of experience and really like it? Or give us the, 
give us the kind of people you think would be empowered by this workshop. Yeah, it's it's both. I have people, I've done this training now for about five years, and I typically get a mix of, of very curious seekers who have no experience with music. And I have uh, a significant amount of professionals that come into this, so behavioral health care, occupational therapy, nurses, educators, who are looking for source material and ways to better connect with the people that they work with. So you have professionals. Yep. It's given more tools in their toolbox, basically. Exactly, exactly. It's it's something that um, is designed to really meet the need of the individual. So I've got people that just come and use the training as a retreat. Uh, they come and just enjoy the weekend. They experience the sound. They experience the techniques, and they do it just for themselves, which is wonderful. Uh, and then I have others uh, who come in for professional reasons. So. Uh, really, it's 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 all across the map. I have people from all over the country that come in from it or for it. I'm sorry, um, you know, as far as as Alaska and California, I mean, wow. people, people, it's it's. I don't even know how they find out about it, but it's 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 fascinating to see. There's this new thing. It's called the internet. Oh, yes. You may have heard about it. Yeah. That's how they. Yeah. That's how. They Thanks, Ben. I keep forgetting we have technology. <laughs> What uh, tell us about where you're going to have the have this and the facility and uh, if there are accommodations that sort of thing. The this training uh, it's it's happening October 10 through the 12th, so it's a three day experience. It's at Laurelville uh, Mennonite Retreat Center, and that's in Mount Pleasant, PA. It's about 45 minutes south of Pittsburgh. Beautiful location. Um, it's going to be right when the leaves are turning, right in the Laurel Mountains. And uh, one of the, the real nice things about the center is that they have uh, this, this path that leads up to the top of the mountain where they, where they are. And there's a big labyrinth on the top of the mountain that looks, oh, nice. overlooks all of creation. So it's, it's a really uh, magnificent place to, to just be. And so it's one pretty reasonable price for uh, the, the workshop and the accommodations and everything? Yeah, the, the, the price on the so, – so people sometimes people commute, so I separate the housing – from the from the tuition, so the tuition is three ninety nine. Okay. Uh, if you if you purchase it before October fourth, I believe, and um, and then the housing, there's there's plans of, of housing on my website, which is drumcircleleadership.com. Okay. Uh, all that information uh, lives there. Drumcircleleadership.com. That's right. And, and people can find you at uh, jimdonovanmusic.com. That's right. Um, and it, I, the thing that um, you know, I, I was a journalist in the Navy, and I've done a lot of public speaking. Um, I've gotten up in front of, of groups. When I was a Navy recruiter, I got up in front of high schools in a starch white <clears> uniform. <throat> Nothing can get you over your fear of public speaking, things like that. So it's never been a huge issue for me, but there's still, I know for a lot of people, uh, and it's not just public speaking, but any kind of performance, there's this huge anxiety in our culture that says, if you don't do it right, you're going to look like an idiot. You know, that's right. And um, e even though we don't hold other people that we watch to those same standards, I, I think it's kind of interesting. And uh, we just want to give a little bit teaser. You have got the best, the best story of overcoming uh, performance anxiety taught to you by none other than Carlos Santana. Can you give us a little teaser about that? Yeah, well, we can set up a. We'll set up another 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 chat for this so I can really tell the full story. It's, yeah. it's a good. Ten we'll have you on as a full guest. It's a for, good for, it's a good ten minute story, but the the gist of it is that in uh, both 1997 and 2002, uh, the band I was in, Russell Root, uh, got to got to tour with Carlos Santana for two summers. So I get to spend the whole summer. It was like summer camp with Carlos, <laughs> and he uh, he invited us on stage to, to play a song with them every night we got to do this and the story is about um carlos carlos surprising me in the middle of a show by pointing at me and when he pointed it was time to take a solo and uh i won't ruin the end of the story but yeah, yeah we'll, it, we'll just leave it there but there are there are some uh there are some some some, some pretty terrible things that happen on stage in front of <laughs> uh, i think it was four hundred thousand people total over two weeks <laughs> but, uh, you know, the lesson I think uh, you've learned and, and all of us that have ever been in front of groups of people is uh, it's not brain surgery. No one actually dies of embarrassment. It's true. That's that's right. Yeah. That's right.
and, and I think really getting that into your bones is one of the most empowering things uh, you can do personally and professionally. So I'm really glad to hear that your training coming up is uh, geared for both both levels. And I, I think it is a really amazing tool for professionals. So I want to really encourage uh, any of the professionals that are that are watching this or hear this uh, to get in touch with you, jimdonovanmusic.com. Or give us the other one, drumcircleleadership.com. Yeah, drums. Yeah, bo both of those are good. You can also email me at jimdonovandrums at gmail.com. That's a good way to get me directly if uh, if you'd like to ask questions. And I'll just say one more thing about any of the trainings that I do. One of my specialties is is helping people learn how to bring the best out in others. So there, there's a very clear system, a clear methodology that I teach that shows you step by step how to go from uh, you know, being with a group of people who are disconnected and helping to bring them together very quickly. This is, this is something uh, even beyond the music part that, that, I, that I love, uh, that I feel is really important, is you know, how, how can we best reach people who are afraid, who are apathetic maybe, uh, who are disinterested? You know, how, how do we reach them? How do we bring them in so that we can really offer them uh, fully what we've come to offer them rather you work than, with, you rather work with than deal with the resistance kids. the whole time. Yeah, you work with autistic kids. Yep. Uh, you work with people in addiction. So these are really powerful tools. Yes, they and they, they work well. I've, I've taught it to, to many hundreds of people. Uh, lots of good success with lots of good success with it. Now, if we could just get you into the Steeler locker room. Well, um, that that's possible. Yeah. Do yeah. that. I'd have to buy some reinforced drums. <laughs> we, could, we could certainly do it though. It's it's on it's on my radar. I've I've been working with sports teams recently. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. Well, tell us, uh, you got some other events coming up this fall through October, November. I do. I have uh, I have a, a general workshop that I'm doing quite often it's called Drum and Chant, and it's really an introduction to the sound empowerment system. Uh, it's it's designed again for anybody who's willing to try. I bring the drums and I show you step by step how to use sound and rhythm and even some uh, some other modalities such as breath work and movement to shift energy that feels heavy into energy that feels light. So I, I give really uh, step by step stress relief techniques uh, that you probably haven't seen before, uh, some things that you can do to help prepare yourself to get deeper sleep. Um, and just uh, you know, tools that you can use that take about two minutes uh, in time to, to perform, uh, just to make you feel good. That's great. And you you know some of the dates coming up in October, November. I have uh, in October. Mm, the, the, the I'll tell you what, the best place to go is jimdonovandrums.com or jimdonovanmusic.com, okay. and look at events. But I have events coming up this week in McMurray, PA, and Greensburg, PA. That is uh, October two and three. And then uh, I have other events coming up in November and December locally in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, but I also travel regionally too. So if, if you're watching this from out of town, uh, jimdonovanmusic.com, click on events. Yeah. It, it, you know, uh, you, I love the the whole idea of light and heavy energy. Um, and I'm wondering how, how you feel when you have students uh, in your class who weren't even born when, when you were on stage at Woodstock in 1999? Uh, that, that is, uh, every year that goes by, increasingly the case, where I, I talk about something that happened. You know, the Our big record, When I Woke, came out 20 years ago this week. Wow. So it's, wow. it's been 20 years since then, and uh, it's just, you know, time is uh, really going back quickly. But yeah, they were all wee little, and it's, uh, it's sobering. To, to see how much time is going by, and, and it's it's also good too. Yeah. Well, best of luck to you, Jim. Thanks for coming on today. My pleasure. Glad to be here. Now let's take a look at the calendar for uh, the next coming month or so. Uh, this uh, next weekend, the fourth and fifth, is the Mid Atlantic Women's Herbal Conference. Uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing, it's Red Earth Farm in Kempton, PA, about a four and a half hour drive. Go to redearthfarm.org. On October 8th, uh, this is a new event. Patty Lemmer had so much success with her vaccination conversation. She's taking it on the road. She's going to have regular, uh, regular conversations. This next one is called The Conversation Continues, Linking Health and Development 
the first Unitarian Church of Pittsburgh on Moorwood. Uh, it's in Shadyside, the corner of Ellsworth uh, in Moorwood. Six o'clock for the potluck, seven to 8.30 for the program. $5 to get you in the door. And this is a series. It'll be $25 for the whole series. Um, moderator is Patty Lemmer, one of our favorite uh, guests here. And she is the author of Outsmarting Autism. Coming up on October 10th, uh, this is what you just heard about, the uh, Sound Empowerment Workshop with Jim Donovan. If you haven't already, make sure you get down to jimdonovanmusic.com. Find out more about all of his events. What a great guy that guy is. On uh, October 17th through the 19th, uh, just above uh, New York City is the Heal Thy Practice Conference. We talked to Eric Goldman a couple of weeks ago about this uh, event. It's a really good event for business, marketing, and how to incorporate the whole integrative medicine into your practice. Uh, really interesting topics. October 17th through the 19th, htpconference.com to find out more about that. And coming up, we're going to talk with uh, Ralph Stevens about this event. This is the Neural Reset Therapy, 16 hours of training. He's doing upper body course, October 31st, November 1st at the Pittsburgh School of Massage. You can find out more at pghschmass.com. And uh, that's right before the November 2nd through the 4th fall conference for massage at CEs, uh, for CEs at Seven Springs. Many, many of those uh, classes are already full. Coming up on November 6th, uh, this is going to be exciting. Dr. Vonda Wright presents Women's Health Conversations at the Weston Convention Center Ballroom. Uh, Womenshealthconversations.com uh, will be there with Trenton Ozipuk and the gang of uh, Organically Social. Another good training uh, for uh, body workers, actually for movement therapists, is uh, Anatomy Trains Workshop taught by Kerry Gaynor. That's happening at the Moxie Mind and Body Studio in uh, Market Square. It's coming up on the 8th through the 9th of November. And then on the November 15th, it's Juice Fest. Let's check in with Trenton and, and get his take on what's going to happen here with Juice Fest. I know. <laughs> Tell us about Juice Fest. So Juice Fest is going to be on November 15th. It's a Saturday and we are meeting in gathering the juice community in Wexford. Um, it's going to be from 11 to 3 and we have all the juice companies in Pittsburgh coming together to have a friendly competition. Um, it's a day for foodies, juice lovers, uh, wellness professionals, um, all within you know the North Hills. That we're, that's where we're ending up for this time. Um, hopefully we'll move it around throughout the city for next year. But uh, from 11 to 3, admissions only $10, uh, we'll have t-shirt sales, all of that. You can learn more by going to getorganicallysocial.com backslash juicefest. Cool, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. So now let's get to our guest. Ralph Stevens is a 2008 inductee into the Massage Therapy Hall of Fame. I'll bet you didn't even know there was a Massage Therapy Hall of Fame. He's been practicing massage therapy uh, to successfully treat the injuries and pain complaints of his clients for the last 27 years, while his particular focus is on athletes and clients ranging from Olympians and Paralympians to passionate amateurs. He also works with other populations from couch potatoes, prenatal, chronic pain, fibromyalgia, MS, post-surgery, brain cord injuries, all sorts of things. He's a skilled teacher in neural reset therapy, NRT. We're going to find out all about that. Uh, we want to. Uh, he's going to be coming here to Pittsburgh to teach uh, 16 hours worth of training uh, right before the big Seven Springs CE conference. We talked about that in the calendar. And according to his websites, while his clients uh, sing the praises of his hands-on skills. The massage therapy community knows him best as a gifted teacher, and that's because he is known for his ability to take complex anatomical and physiological com uh, concepts and make them easy to understand, which you know is going to be good for this podcast. So let's welcome Ralph Stevens. How are you All doing right. today, Ralph? <laughs> well, we appreciate it. We just talked a little bit before we came on air. You told us that you spent a little time getting your set all prepared, so we really appreciate the extra effort there. You look great. Well, thank you. Glad to be here, and uh, thanks to everybody who's listening. Now, give us, uh, you're coming to Pittsburgh, uh, and you're going to be teaching at the Pittsburgh School of Massage and then at Seven Springs. Uh, give us a little thumbnail of your history, uh, what you do, uh, how you got into massage, where your training was, all that sort of thing. Well, I was a musician on the road, drummer, band leader, vocalist, and I discovered massage while I was out traveling around the countryside as a musician. 
And I said, wow, this would be better for people than playing the music even. And, um, and I wouldn't have to stay up so late at night and smoke their cigarettes with them and all that stuff. So that was before the no smoking laws. And uh, so when I got out of the band in 1985, um, I went to massage school, the New Mexico School of Natural Therapeutics. And I came back to Iowa City, Iowa. I'm originally from Iowa. And I, uh, Iowa City is kind of a college town, University of Iowa there. And, and um, opened the first practice of therapeutic massage that was open to the public. Um, there were some uh, women working at the Women's Center and things like that in Iowa City, but nobody actually had a practice of massage therapy that was open to the public. So I was the first person to do that. And wow. my practice grew rapidly. Uh, a school opened in Iowa uh, uh, shortly after my practice opened. And I was, since I had a degree in teaching and I could explain things, I was asked to teach at that massage school. And that grew into teaching continuing education. Um, I taught for Paul St. John. I studied with him extensively. Uh, and then I created my own series of workshops and I taught medical massage for quite a few years now, about 20 some years. Uh, around the country and even internationally. And then I um, discovered neural reset therapy. And now I'm moving into teaching that pretty much extensively. It's the greatest work that I have found in 20 years of massage therapy. And I'm really excited to be out sharing that work with people. Well, I, I'm, I'd like to get into that. Uh, first thing, let's just set the stage a little bit. I, uh, you know, we, we interviewed Dean Juhan last week and we've got you this week. Um, and I am thoroughly, thoroughly uh, amazed at the gulf uh, that exists between what people like you uh, know about soft tissue and the, the body and, and the gulf between what you guys know and what traditional medical doctors know uh, about soft tissue. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, what is it so special about just the whole idea of touch and massage and, and soft tissue work? Wow. Well, we could spend I, some time on that. Uh, in 30 minutes or 30 seconds or less, please. 30 yeah. seconds or less. Okay. Um, I've done commercials before I can do this. Um, the big thing is that, that uh, the medical profession really doesn't have a lot of tools to deal with soft tissue dysfunction. Uh, they can drug it and they can cut it and they can sew it back up again. And those are wonderful skills that they have to do that because some people really need that. But the average person isn't that severe. And to just put them on drugs, there is no drug that will relax the bicep muscle, for example. Mm. There's no drug that will just relax that muscle in your low back that's in spasm. So when they put you on a drug, it just knocks your whole system down mm. and gives a variety of side effects that those drugs produce. So to them, touch takes way too long. They can't bill enough for it. And so manual medicine was kind of eliminated from the medical system when science became golden and the pharmaceutical and surgery route became the preferred um, uh, cash flow. And so it's the rare physician that has really taken the time to study soft tissue uh, dysfunction. There are certainly some out there. Uh, Janet Travell and, and um, uh, Dr. Rene Callier and, and, and many others. Uh, but the general practitioner in the medical profession just doesn't study soft tissue dysfunction that much. And we know we just know what we study. We know what we've been allowed to know. And it's just not in their consciousness, really. It's uh, soft tissues like something that they x-ray through or cut through. And uh, it seems to grow back together pretty easily. And so it's not a big deal. <laughs> but we found that that touch is one of the big things that's missing in our high tech society. Just that non-threatening uh, touch that people are so lacking today. And just that is very nurturing. And the other thing is that when we can actually affect the soft tissue by influencing the nervous system, we can reduce most people's soft tissue pain. And that's why they go to most doctors. Let's face it. Why do you go to the doctor? Why do you go to the hospital? Something hurts. Yeah. And that might be a severe pathology and you need to see that doctor or that hospital. But many times it's soft tissue pain. And in that case, they don't have a lot of answers for it. Yeah. Now we know that uh, just the touch and just a, a simple massage can actually lower the cortisol levels. So we know it's just on the very rudimentary level. But talk a little bit about the specifics of NRT. What makes it so special and, and what does it do above and beyond that? Well, the, the primary reason that people experience soft tissue 
pain uh, in a soft tissue being like muscles and skin and fascia, the soft tissue as opposed to the hard tissue, the bony tissue, when they experience pain, there is a condition called ischemia. And ischemia means a lack of blood in a part, lack of blood flow. And blood flow is restricted when a muscle is in spasm. Just like if, you know, we say you white knuckle the steering wheel, why do the knuckles turn white? Because you're holding the steering wheel so hard that the blood can't get into the knuckles and they blanch and turn white. Hmm. When a muscle does that to itself, for example, if you do a maximal contraction of any muscle, like you say you use your bicep to lift a weight, that's the most you can possibly lift, it completely collapses the capillary bed of that muscle. And that muscle can only then function until it runs out of fuel and oxygen, and then you fatigue and drop the weight. Mm. Well, most of us aren't in that much of a contraction. We're in a small percentage contraction, but that's enough to restrict the blood flow so that there isn't proper oxygenation and blood flow and waste removal in the tissue, and that tissue becomes irritable, just like you'd be irritable if somebody was half holding your nose and throat and uh, not allowing you to get enough air to breathe. And you'd get irritable pretty quickly. So that tissue is painful. It fatigues rapidly. It hurts when we move. It aches. And the question has been, in, in a variety of massage therapy techniques, physical therapy techniques, other things, how can we get that muscle to relax? We found that if you stimulate the nervous system correctly, it knows how to relax a muscle. A neural reset therapy is the latest uh, uh, approach to getting muscles to relax very quickly and very easily. What we're doing is applying a, a, a stimulation that triggers mechanoreceptors, which are little nerve fibrils in the, scattered throughout the body. And when these are stimulated, they call up the central nervous system and go, hey, I'm being tickled down here and I really like it and everything's fine. Could you do something uh, to help me enjoy it? And the central nervous system says, sure, I'll just relax that area for you. Hmm. A mechanoreceptor is triggered and they, they sense, I'm having a little fun with this, of course, it's more serious, it's more technical than that, but they are sensitive to, to pressure to slow stretch, to vibration, various things like that. When we can apply that kind of stimulus to the nervous system very precisely, the nervous system knows how to relax that muscle just like it knows how to contract it and hold it into spasm. And it's holding it in spasm and it's kind of forgotten that it's even in spasm because it's off busy doing other things now. Hmm. And so we're calling the attention of the nervous system back to that specific muscle with a very specific stimulus to the mechanoreceptors in that muscle so that when we stimulate them very gently in a non-threatening manner, the nervous system goes, oh, yeah, I can just reset that muscle to normal tonus, we call it, or normal tension. Boom, blood flow returns to the muscle, lymphatic flow returns to the muscle, and pain goes away, usually in seconds. So maybe I missed this, but why is it that the muscles don't, relax on their own you say the the the, con the nervous system gets busy with other things or or it's so busy taking care of this one situation or how do they get locked up like that is it just based on the various conditions or injuries well okay so the first time you tried to learn how to ride a bicycle remember all the things you had to remember to do because mm -hmm. you had to balance and steer and pedal and shift gears and all these things man that was a lot to keep track of but it didn't take very long before pretty soon you just learned how to do all those things and you automatically pedal and balance and steer and shift the gears. And meanwhile, you watch the beautiful scenery go by as you ride your bicycle today. Driving in cars the same way. Look at all the things we have to do to drive a car that now are almost like automatic to us. Sure. The nervous system creates facilitated pathways. When an injury occurs, the body causes a spasm around that injury to protect it, to stop the bleeding, which might just be very small microtrauma or might be significant. And it creates this spasm around the area. And then it, it goes off to do other things. And that spasm gets left on in kind of a loop in the nervous system. We call them facilitated pathways. Hmm. Loops also form from repetitive activity at work. Uh, repetitive activity in athletics, uh, repetitive activity in some position that we hold, phone under our ear, that's 
not as big a thing anymore because people have headsets and things now. But um, uh, and so the tonus of those muscles increases and then that cuts off their blood supply and the mm -hmm. tissues become ischemic. But the body doesn't think, oh, I'll just let go of that. The body recognizes it as pain, sends it to the conscious mind, and the conscious mind goes, oh, my, what do I do about this? I better go to the chiropractor, the doctor, da da da, -da take an Advil, do whatever I'm going to do. And so we have to give the nervous system a very specific stimulus to get it to relax that specific muscle. Hmm. Now, the other thing, of course, is there's that wonderful thing out there we call stress. And by very definition, our reaction to stress is the sympathetic nervous system, the sympathetic response. And part of the sympathetic response is increased muscle tone. We tense up when we're under stress. Our mm. shoulders raise and our abdomen tightens and, you know, and we get ready to fight or flight. Right. And that was supposed to just happen when the saber-toothed tiger jumped out from behind a tree, but now the saber-toothed tiger is our alarm clock and getting the kids off to school and driving through the traffic and going to work. And the, and the saber-toothed tiger is always there chasing us. Yeah, yeah. I'll see. And people are always in this sympathetic state. And, you know, a very small percentage of the population meditates or does relaxation-type exercises and that's one of the reasons touch is so important is yeah. that it helps to bring about that parasympathetic state and touch can provide the stimulus to the nervous system if done precisely to relax a specific muscle a particular point or it can relax a whole group of muscles depending on the stimulus we provide mm. so i think this is really interesting so there's a uh, I mean, we know all this stuff works together, but there's a very, very close relationship then in this neural reset therapy between the nervous system and the muscles. You're actually kind of, it's kind of both. You're actually triggering or sending signals to both. Is that right? Mm -hmm. We palpate. So, so the, the protocol for, for neural reset therapy is we palpate a muscle gently with our fingertips typically, mm -hmm. and the patient reports one of three things. Well, one of four things. It's ticklish, it's tender, or it's painful, or sore, hurts, mm -hmm. or nothing. That feels fine, feels wonderful, okay? If it's ticklish, tender, ticklish, tight, or tender, we call those the three T's. <laughs> then, Say that three times fast. <laughs> yeah, then we do a... Um, uh, what we call a reset on that particular muscle that we've just palpated. And we provide a non-threatening, confusing stimulus to the nervous system very precisely through the mechanoreceptors of that particular muscle. The nervous system reacts to that and sends a signal called reciprocal inhibition back to the muscle. Now, the nervous system does this all the time. Every time you move, you elicit reciprocal inhibition. If I decided to, to, uh, to contract my bicep and flex my forearm, the body tells the tricep to relax and elongate. We call that reciprocal inhibition. Reciprocal meaning the opposite, inhibition meaning to inhibit mm. the muscle's contraction. Okay? Every movement we make, the body is inhibiting the antagonist of the muscle we're contracting to move. It's called Sherrington's Law of Reciprocal Inhibition. It's his second law. It's published in all physiological and anatomical textbooks. Hmm. And and uh, we forgot to turn off the cell phone, didn't we? Okay, we'll stifle that. No, I'm sorry. And, I didn't know you were in London. <laughs> and... Uh, um, when that happens in my class, the student has to stay behind and give me a massage afterwards. <laughs> no. Oh, good. So I get, to, I get a massage when you come to Seven Springs, right? That's right. It's a deal. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, the nervous system is doing this all the time. If it didn't, we'd be rigid. Sure. Okay? Sure. And so if the nervous system knows how to relax a muscle and let it elongate so that we can move, how can we elicit that? and get it to turn off a muscle that's in spasm and causing pain. Mm. So we stimulate the mechanoreceptors very gently in a non-threatening way so the nervous system sends this inhibition signal down and just says, well, just relax and go back to normal mm. tonus and blood flow returns, pain goes away. 
the, tra the classic massage technique has been to, to, to palpate the tissues. And when we find tender tissue, we press into them yeah. and we strip through them and we put our elbow into them and we cross fiber friction and we do all these things, which elicits at least discomfort to the patient. It hurts so good though. It hurts so good. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And quite honestly, that as long as it's in the hurt so good range and not the pain range, the body does send an inhibition signal, but it sends it right to that spot as opposed to relaxing, for example, the entire bicep uh, muscle. Interesting. Okay. And so neural reset therapy is letting us relax the whole muscle, even fibers we can't touch because they're too deep, they're under a bone, they're uh, in, 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 uh, enmeshed in the oh, fascia, sure. whatever. Sure. By doing these movements, we can actually engage fibrils that we can't even get to with our fingers and thumbs. So this therapy is virtually painless to the patient. Now, the patient that loves to get beat up, okay, and likes that endorphin release that they get yeah. from experiencing that, uh, they're missing that in NRT. They're just getting pure relaxation. Hmm. And that's kind of interesting because some people don't feel completely massaged, so we do a little bit of regular massage after we're so done. So you've got to beat them up then afterwards. Yeah, so then we can beat you up afterwards, but it's a lot easier on the therapist <laughs> to beat somebody up after they're relaxed than when they're all tight and tense. <laughs> that's really interesting. So uh, I imagine we, you mentioned a couple of the laws there, and that's part of these neurological laws that you utilize. Are there some other important neurological laws that we should know about or that are useful for massage professionals? Or? Well, the neural reset therapy is based completely on uh, neurological laws and principles, anatomy, physiology, and kinesiology. There is nothing mystical, nothing magical, um, uh, nothing against energetic therapies. I, I don't mean to put them down in any way, but exactly. this is all very physical. You can explain this to an MD, a PT. Um, we've got the, the laws and the anatomy to back it up. And um, so the main law is Sherrington's second law, the law of reciprocal inhibition that says when a muscle is contracted, its antagonist is inhibited. Mm. We also use um, Fluger's law of symmetry, which says that when a stimulus is great enough on one side of the body, the corresponding muscle on the other side will manifest motor activity or reaction. Using this law, I can treat your left deltoid by applying a stimulus to your right deltoid. Hmm. I don't have to touch the injured muscle. So if you're in a cast, if you're in a sling, uh, if you've got a rash, if, if a, a, a soccer player falls down and their knees all skinned up, uh, and, and it would be very painful and inappropriate to touch that raw tissue, I can treat their other knee and get a relaxation in the knee. This works fabulous for joint replacements, uh, for people in casts, things like that that are experiencing pain in the cast and you can't get to it because of the cast. We can relax the muscle by treating the other side of the body. This is the only therapy that we've found that, can, that actually utilizes this principle and can work on one side of the body from the other side. That is fascinating. Now, talk a little bit about the kinesiology. How do you use kinesiology? Uh, there are some mystical woo-woo uses for it, too. Um, the, here I use it. Yeah. Okay. So there's, there is the energetic kinesiology where they muscle test, for example, you hold some vitamins in one hand, and then they check to see if your fist is strong or your arm is uh, strong or whatever. Sure. But kinesiology, in its pure sense, is the science of movement. It is what movement does the bicep cause? You know, what movement does the deltoid do for the body? And we're using that aspect of kinesiology, the pure science, uh, uh, the anatomical aspect of kinesiology. And we use that because to reset a particular muscle, you need to know the movement that that muscle does. Mm. So therefore, you do the movement of that muscle or the opposite movement of that muscle to provide a stimulation to that muscle to attract the nervous system's attention to it by firing the mechanoreceptors in that muscle and eliciting the inhibition response back to it. Hmm. Uh, I, I, I understood what you said, but uh, don't ask me to repeat that. that <laughs> 
Well, play the tape back. Play, that's right. We'll, we'll play it. Well, that's why we have you on these podcasts. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, Lawrence Wood. He, he's the guy that developed this, uh, and you trained directly with him. How how did he develop this? How did he discover this? Uh, how did this come about? Okay. Well, the law of reciprocal inhibition was published by Dr. Sherrington back in the early 1900s. And uh, this concept has been around for a long time. Uh, like I say, I've been in massage for 27 years. About 25 years ago, I remember some therapists that were veterans, but when I was only a two-year fledgling in the profession, and they were playing around trying to elicit uh, reciprocal inhibition to relax a painful muscle. And sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. And the attitude was, well, okay, if it worked great and if it didn't, well, I've got five other things I can do for a sore muscle. Okay. And Lawrence learned that trick. Lawrence uh, is, is quite an interesting individual. He has a uh, bachelor's degree in public health education. Uh, he was a dental hygienist for a while, and he was a dermatology tech for a while. And then he got into massage. He went to one of Sandy Fritz's massage schools. So she had one in Indianapolis or around there at the time. Uh, Sandy has written many textbooks for the massage therapy profession, and Sandy and I are very good friends and colleagues for many, many years. Hmm. And uh, Lawrence went to school at one of Sandy's schools, and then, and Sandy, in one of her advanced classes, demonstrated a an attempt to use reciprocal inhibition, and it works sometimes, and it didn't other times. But Lawrence always wondered, why does it work sometimes and not all the time? Because we know the law of reciprocal inhibition works with every movement the body makes. How can we get it to work consistently from a therapy standpoint? And so that became his quest over his 25 years of, of uh, practice. And, uh, and Lawrence went to work and has just been a clinician, not just, but has been a clinician in Indianapolis uh, for 25 years now. Um, and he studied with virtually everybody that you've heard of in the massage therapy profession and many outside the profession. And he was always looking for a way to, um, to elicit this reciprocal inhibition in a consistent manner. And uh, he's been all over the country and out of the country looking for this answer. And uh, he, fi he studied with uh, some various people around the country that, that sort of get it to work, but again, not consistently, not reproducibly. And, um, and he just kept working and thinking and pondering, why doesn't this work? And if you do that long enough, the mind starts to give you answers. And he had some insights that allowed him to put together this system, which he did over a period of four or five years. Now, I write a column in Massage Today magazine, mm -hmm. and um, uh, usually about every other month, and, and Lawrence wrote me an email in response to something. I, I put a therapy tip in the column, and he wrote me back and, and challenged my therapy tip. And so we just started a dialogue and finally agreed we were both right. And I started... Um, a, con a nice conversation with him. I travel around the country teaching my workshops, and being on the road is hard on the body. Sure. And so uh, I believe in the work that I do, and so I get therapy all over the country. Wherever I go, I get massage, I get acupuncture, uh, chiropractic, and uh, it keeps me going. And I, um, so I scheduled to come through Indianapolis and actually meet this guy that I knew on the Internet, and he worked on me, and I was quite impressed. So every time I went through Indianapolis, I'd have Lawrence give me a, a treatment or two. Yeah. And he started showing me this reciprocal inhibition work. And again, it was inconsistent. Uh, when it worked, it was great. And he just kept working it and working it. And, and over about two years, uh, one day I showed up and he worked on me and he had it. It was just like everything yeah. he did worked. The pain went away. It didn't hurt me at all. I felt incredible afterwards. And I said, Lawrence, we got to bottle this. This is too good. You know, people need to know this. And uh, he didn't really want to go out on the road with it uh, and teach like I do, but he said he would put it together into a system if I would help him and if I would take it out and, and be the main teacher on the road initially. And so we put together the, and he primarily did, but I advised and consulted with him to get it into a teachable form, the PowerPoints, incredible manuals with uh, very good pictures and illustrations. And um, we put together a series of three seminars to teach neural reset therapy. And uh, Lawrence is still developing new things and getting new insights into this work as he continues to work with it in his full-time clinical practice. Hmm. And, 
um, I was his first instructor. We now have uh, three other people in training to become instructors. We have about half a dozen teaching assistants around the country, uh, and we're presenting this in, in a series of three workshops. There's the upper body workshop, and we break the body at about the diaphragm or the bottom of the rib cage, so mm -hmm. right about in here, okay, so that the upper body is from here up, and the lower body is the lower extremities and the hip and the low back and abdomen, because we find it where does the low back end and the pelvis begin and how do we separate all of that? So in the lower body course, we include the low back. There is a 16 hour workshop. It's a two day workshop uh, for the lower body and for the upper body uh, coming up here in November. I believe it's October. October 31st. 31st. Yeah. One. Yeah. Uh, we're doing the upper body class in Pittsburgh. We did the lower body class at the Pittsburgh School of Massage earlier this year, and now okay. we're coming back with the upper body class. There's three places left in that class right now as we do this podcast. Oh, okay. I just checked the school this morning. Okay. And so if you're interested, this is the chance to get in on this new wave of massage. We've got three places left in that class. And um, uh, I'll be back next year. We're working on dates for next year to bring the series back next year as well. It's been very successful. Both classes were very well attended this year. Yeah. Uh, we're teaching North Carolina, Fort Wayne, Omaha, Chicago, and we're getting out there as fast as we can with the work. And then Lawrence has an advanced class that he teaches, uh, which has just been taught once. It'll be taught again in October. And as we get enough people through the basic classes, then we'll start bringing the advanced class out. And he's actually agreed to go out on the road with it. So oh, he's getting wow. excited about this work and sharing it with people. That's great. Uh, so I got to ask, was there some magic bullet that he, what was the, the final uh, key to the, the kingdom that allowed him to fix these problems all the time? Well, the, uh, like I said, he had some insights that there are, the, the big thing that most people using this work didn't realize is that to reset most muscles, the fibers run, most muscles don't have fibers that just run straight from point A to point B. Most muscles have a little bit of a twist to them. Uh, they Very few muscles just do a movement. Most of them do multiple movements, like they might do adduction and internal rotation, or they might do flexion and, and supination. Um, most muscles do multiple things. And if you only use one movement, you're probably not going to reset all the fibers of that muscle. Mm. Many muscles cross two joints and act as, as a flexor on one end and an extender on the other end. And if you don't treat a muscle in that manner, then you won't get the results that, that you desire. Hmm. And he just kept working uh, with, and had several other insights that allowed us to put the system together uh, so that we can act effectively and, and consistently get results and we can teach it to people who can take it out and do this work. One of the things I asked Lawrence, because like me, he's a veteran therapist of uh, 25 years, and you kind of have that feeling and, and that experience that uh, just lets you do things with all the things that you've studied. And I said, Lawrence, is this, I mean, can other people, are other people going to be able to do this, or is this just something that you do because you just got it? And he said, nope, ever, anybody can learn this, anybody can do this. And sure enough, um, I was able to learn it, I do it. I've, we've taught it to almost 400 people now, and um, uh, they're taking it out and putting it to work in all sorts of situations, from clinics to spas to massage envies to uh, private practices, uh, working with them for all sorts of different conditions and getting incredible results. So it's something that anybody can do. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. I mean, this sounds incredible. Uh, I, I can't wait to get one uh, to, to try it out myself. So the key thing is no pain. Uh, and gain, you know, so it's a no pain and gain kind of That's massage. Right. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is that, that so many of the therapies destroy the therapist, especially uh, the deep tissue, the, the, the heavy duty trigger point, using your thumbs, using your wrists. Therapists have a three to five year career life in many cases because uh, they don't use good body mechanics and then they injure themselves and can't do the work anymore. It's really yeah. sad. This works very easy on the therapist. Uh, this is extending therapist careers. 
um, or it's saving young therapists from injuring themselves so that they're going to be able to work a long time. So not only is it no pain to the patient, it's no pain to the therapist. That's a, that's a big thing. Uh, yeah. We, we talk a lot on this podcast about, uh, you, you know, that the, the, person who needs the help the most oftentimes, and especially when you talk about stress, is the doctors, you know. Right. They're under more stress than anybody else. Uh, first, it's physician heal thyself, you know. Exactly. Um, so uh, before we go, I want to talk about a couple quick things here. Um, you do have a series of DVDs on your site. Uh, looks like some really great topics. Uh, since we do have doctors, or at least we hope we have doctors watching the show, talk about the golf flexology DVD. What is golf flexology? Well, it's in a, most golfers are limited in their ability because of their inflexibility. You can't swing a club properly if you don't have the flexibility to go through the full range of motion of the golf swing. And when you can't go through the full range of motion of the golf swing, then you start compensating and you typically do that inconsistently. So the ball goes left, the ball goes right, the ball doesn't go as far as it should one time and it goes farther than it should the next time uh, because you're compensating for this lack of ability to swing the club. So this was an attempt to combine active isolated stretching and self-massage, massage that the golfer could do on their own golfer's elbow, for example, or in their own low back or their own shoulders so that the golfer can generate the flexibility that they need to be able to swing the club properly and consistently. And it was a program I put together with the help of Aaron Matties, who developed the system of active isolated stretching. Aaron gave me the, he's worked with many, many professional golfers, and he gave me a set of stretches to use on the video that would um, best suit golfers that they could all do on themselves. It's all self-assisted work. And I teach the massage that a golfer can do. Plus, very few golfers warm up or cool down before mm. they play and after they play. This has a warm up that warms the tissues up so you're less likely to develop injuries, how to cool down afterwards, just little five minute routines. Uh, so it's a way for a golfer to take better care of themselves and to get more enjoyment out of the game, not to mention playing better. Well, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, you're a, you're a big sports guy. You work on athletes. Uh, you've got a DVD for golfers. Uh, here's the most important question I have to ask you today. Who are you picking in the baseball playoffs? <laughs> you know? You don't even know, do you? <laughs> I don't have any idea. Um, I don't really pay much attention to it till it gets down to the fi to the to the semifinals and then the World Series. Yeah, and then I choose teams for absolutely no reason at all, other than I like that city or. Uh, there's somebody from Iowa playing on that team or whatever it happens to be. Uh, I'm not a, I, I, I mean, baseball is a wonderful game. It's, I, I just don't follow it that much. It's not your game. Uh, but, um, uh, I'm more interested in helping people get out of pain and, and studying the human body than I am, uh, recreational sports. Well, you know, we're in Pittsburgh and, uh, pirates are going to the playoffs. So I had to ask that question. So, hey, yeah. in that case, I love the pirates. There you go. <laughs> now we love you too. So <laughs> Ralph Stevens coming to town October 31st and November 1st for the Pittsburgh School of Massage. And then at uh, Seven Springs for the, uh, CE conference. So that one is, I know, sold out. Uh, That's going to be an incredible conference. Yeah. Both of my amazing. classes, I got one place left in the forearm carpal tunnel workshop as oh, of we do? this okay. morning. The sacrum is, sacrum is sold out, and uh, but it's going to be a great meeting. I hope some, a lot of people come up and enjoy that conference. There's still lots of good classes to take, yeah. even though mine are full. We've been, we've been pub, uh, publicizing it here on this podcast. Uh, Bob Jantz, uh, a good friend of mine, and uh, we like to see uh, – he does such a great work and uh, such a good reputation in the city of Pittsburgh for his uh, graduates and everything. So thanks for uh, coming to Pittsburgh. Thanks for uh, being on our podcast today, Ralph Stevens. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Good luck, everybody. Take care and be well. Thank you so much. And that will do it for today's podcast. I want to thank both of my guests, Jim Donovan and Ralph Stevens. Uh, great information today. Uh, you can find us here every Tuesday at 4 o'clock. You can watch us live. And then look for us Wednesdays on YouTube, iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher. You can also find various posts on Facebook. And we're on Google+. And until next week, yins, be careful out there.